Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, what being a man means to me is to uh, <laughs> is to know that I am responsible for what God has given me and for the people that God has placed in my life. And I could either make excuses or I could make choices. Um, but that doesn't also mean that I need to do it alone. But it does mean uh, that I need to be willing to grow, willing to apologize, <laughs> willing to make mistakes, but willing to say, God, I cannot do this without you. So that's really what a man means to me is to know that all this has been given to me by God and I'm going to be accountable for it. And I need to do something with it that honors him. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is James Howard Jr. And you're tuned in to another episode of the Men to Men podcast. I'd like to thank you for checking out this episode. And if you've been around, we're about five episodes in. I'd like to thank you for your support so far. In this episode, we're going to have a conversation with my friend James Wilson out of South Carolina about what it means to be a man. He's going to tell us a little bit about his story and how he developed into the man of God that he is today. But before we jump into that conversation, I want to remind you that if you're watching this on YouTube, to make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, that you turn on those notifications, and that you also put a big fat like on this video. Also, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any other platform, make sure that you hit the like or whatever it is that you have to do to show the algorithm of that specific app that you like this podcast and that other people need to hear it. And if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts, the best way that you can help this podcast out is by leaving a five-star review. Leaving a review will help Apple see that this podcast needs to go out to more men so that we can continue to help men honor God in every single part of their lives. All right. So let's jump into my conversation with my friend, James Wilson. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is James Howard Jr. And you're tuned in to another episode of the Men to Men podcast, where our purpose is simply to help men honor God in every single part of their lives. Today, I got a special guest for us today, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a man of God, a father, a husband, uh, so many other things that he does. And we're going to let you talk. We're going to let him tell about himself here in a second. But I have my friend James Wilson, who's going to be hanging out with us today as we start our conversation about what a biblical man looks like. So James, what's up, bro? How you doing today, man? My man. James, it's uh, good. To, <laughs> it's good yeah. to see you. Uh, we share a great name. It's biblical, and yes. uh, you know, and with that name lies great responsibility. You know, yes. James. Uh, yes. But man, it's great to connect with you, and I'm excited to talk about manhood because it's an important thing for all of us. Yeah, man. And um, a couple of things we'll touch on, man. We'll touch on uh, manhood, and then we'll touch on some other stuff a little bit later, man. But I wanted to bring you on. Uh, James and I met back in. What, 2014? Had to be 14? Yeah, 2014. We were connected, man. We've just been friends uh, uh, ever since. And we, we've we had some uh, shared struggles and some different things that we had to deal with together uh, that kind of brought us closer together. And um, he's he's moved on from Mississippi. How long you get, how long y'all been gone from, from Hattiesburg, man? Uh, probably about ooh, from Hattiesburg, maybe six years. Yeah, okay. From Hattiesburg and, uh, we're, as a whole. Are y'all in North Carolina or South Carolina? Yeah, we're in South Carolina now. I serve at a church um, as a children and family pastor. And so, you know, oversee with the kids, but then also with things of parents and marriage and parenting. And also, you know, with our men's ministry, uh, you know, was able to get us a, uh, you know, we have the shooting event <laughs> coming up okay. in a couple of weeks. You know, what, what do men want to do? I don't know, shoot guns. Yeah. Uh, I guess. I'm more of a uh, play video game type of guy. Uh, right. But yeah, so that's kind of what we do and what I get to do. I have a lovely wife, Allison. We've been married almost 10 years and two precious kids, Eli and Ellie, I'm five and two. So we're wide open over here in a good way. That's good, man. That's good. I tell you what, man, the life of a young father or a father of young kids, man, is, is something that uh, is an adventure. Uh, my baby girl's about to turn four or she, and by the time this airs, she'll probably already be four years old. And uh, man, it's just it's interesting to see how they develop in just those first few years, just how much they grow, how much they learn, how much they say, uh, mm-hmm. which is crazy, man. This podcast is all about helping men honor God with every part of their lives. And so uh, today I want to just touch on uh, your perspective um, of what biblical manhood is or what manhood is in general. So the first question I want to ask you, man, is uh, what does being a man mean to you? 
Yeah, I think uh, I think most of the times we try to rush by that answer, um, and we try to make it like really deep. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, what being a man means to me is to uh, <laughs> is to know that I am responsible for what God has given me, and for the people that God has placed in my life, and I could either make excuses or I could make choices. Um, but that doesn't also mean that I need to do it alone. But it does yeah. mean uh, that I need to be willing to grow, willing to apologize, <laughs> willing to make mistakes, but willing to say, God, I cannot do this without you. So that's really what a man means to me is to know that all this has been given to me by God and I'm going to be accountable for it. And I need yeah. to do something with it that honors yeah. him. Yeah, man. And we, we've had a, a few people on the show and it seems to be a reoccurring answer uh, in some kind of way or some kind of form where the guys are saying responsibility. Um, men's uh, men's uh, purpose is to be responsible and to take care of things. And um, it's just pr- pretty cool, man. I had an interview with a guy here in town. Uh, his name is Mitch. He's over the FCA here in this area. And um, he said that a, a man is a person who just takes responsibility. We were created to be responsible and he he pointed out how in genesis how um adam was was put in the garden of eden and he was given responsibility to take care of uh take care of that land even before sin entered into it and all that kind of stuff his main responsibility was to be responsible for the things that god gave him and god has given us so much as men to be responsible for so our families you know our jobs ourselves uh even if you don't have family and stuff like that our kids if you got kids and stuff like that man there's so many things that we as men are uh, biblically responsible for and um so many men sadly man try to pass on responsibilities try to shift it to other people um and make those excuses to not take responsibility of what god has given us man so that's good stuff right there man so tell me this man growing up um what was what was your definition of being a man growing up? Yeah, I think growing up as a child, uh, my definition of being a man just with the culture, you know, with all the TV shows and all the music and all these other things. Um, I think my definition of a man growing up was uh, have a lot of fun and acquire a lot of things and do what you want. <laughs> yeah. 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 Honestly, you know, because again, that that's what I saw, you know, in culture, and that's what I just thought, man. And that, you know, and it goes to that language of children. You know, I can't, I can't wait to grow up. I can't yeah. wait to grow up. Uh, but it's really to, you know, I want to grow up and have control to do what I want to do. And sadly, that was a lens in which I saw uh, of what being a man was was to, you know, be able to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's just the that's just the culture. Even like today. It's just like you do what you want to do, whatever feels right goes, and it's just it's just not the case. If if our goal is to be a biblical God honoring man, then just doing what we want to do just does not fit in that definition, and um, it's something that um, I would consider like an honor, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's not easy, right? To 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 make sure that we are taking responsibility. And honoring God because it's so much easier to just do what you want to do. So much yeah, easier. Absolutely. Yeah, forget, forget this, forget that. Just do what I want to do. So let me ask you this, man. Um, I don't know if I really ever asked you this, man, but what were your what were your family dynamics growing up? Like, was your father around and stuff like that when you got when you were growing up? Yeah, when I was a kid, I have um, some vague memories of my dad, and then when I was eight years old, which I write it, I, I wrote about this in my book. Um, Because it's talking about, you know, pain and how do we form that pain into purpose. And so for me, one of those big issues, like you said, was, you know, as a kid growing up saying, oh, yeah, just to grow up and be whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. So my parents got divorced when I was eight. And then at that point, I actually asked my father if I could live with him Um, because, you know, I I need a man in my life. And and my dad actually said no, Uh, which, again, to his point, whatever his reasons were. um, But it's almost like a Joseph thing to where, you know. I'm exactly where God wants me to be, despite the things that happened in my past. Yeah. Um, so from there, I, mo- I moved in with my mom and my sister from eight until, you know, later on through high school. So finished up elementary, middle school, then high school uh, without a male role model in the home, a Christian role model in the home. And so you take 
of a kid going, hey, I want to be, I, being a man is growing up and doing whatever you want to do. And then you take the absence of a father hmm. um, and then you have, you know, culture throughout middle school and then in high school. And then you have, um, that's, uh, yeah, that's the materials for a destructive life. Um, and that's exactly why a young a lot of men uh, go to the prison uh, without fathers. Um, and some do, but most likely with the statistics is those without, because again, without somebody to help you and to form you and to shape you and to mold you, yeah. uh, you start to try to do your own thing. And the older you get, the stronger you get, the more quote wiser unquote you yeah. get, you know. <laughs> and then you just have a you know your mom trying to you know help you, and then it gets to a point to where you are physically stronger. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I I knew better growing up. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, yeah, everyone yeah. bucked back. Um, but that was really my dynamic of learning how do I become a man when there's no man in the home? What wow. does that look like? I don't know. How can I find that? And most teenagers aren't searching for that. They're just living through that. Yeah. So what, what would you say? Um, what would you say was the most difficult part uh, about you growing up as a man? Um, only having your mom and your sister and stuff around and not really having that strong male role model in your house every day, consistent and active, man. What was what would you say was the toughest part for you growing up, looking back right now? Yeah, I think, um, you know, reflecting on those things, which are healthy to do sometimes. You know, we don't live in the past, but to reflect on them. I say one of the things that was uh, big for me was just uh, pain. You know, the pain as the, as the big broad word, but inside that pain was jealousy um, of all my, you know, friends or classmates who had homes, you know, yeah. with both parents, even the, you know, we lived in a trailer park. So I had actually all three of my friends, um, except for one, his name was Brandon, but you know, all of us, you know, the rest of them had moms and dads. And so every time I go over there, oh, you know, seeing them and their family. So with jealousy, but then also with anger, you know, anger at my dad going, what is, what's wrong with me? You know, is there something wrong with me? Uh, and then confusion just being lost without a guide. You know, if you think of any great uh, any great movie, you know, whether that's the Lord of the Rings, you know, there's there's always a guide helping you. And, mm-hmm. and that's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our guide. You know, for me, I wasn't that close to, <laughs> I wasn't that close to the Lord, you know, in those earlier days. And so I was trying to find, <laughs> you know, answers from everywhere else, AKA my friends or from, you know, television. And again, that's when the internet was really getting started and, you know, be, be able to get it in homes. You know, so I'm just searching for, you know, guides and searching for answers everywhere else um, but God and from my actual dad. So I think pain, yeah. jealousy, and anger, those were a big part yeah. of my um, childhood. Yeah. And by the way, um, your book, man, was a good book. I read it, like, when it first came out, what, about two, three years ago? Yeah, I think about three years yeah. ago. Yeah, Pain Formation. Yeah. yeah. So Pain Formation, uh, we'll link it in the description below. Um, great book, short book, short, sweet to the point, just good, good, solid stuff, man. Not a lot of fluff, um, real, just good stuff, man, right there. And so I would advise you guys to to check that, check that out. James tells about his story, about his struggles, about some of the things that he's dealing with even still today, man, but how good God is and how, man, he's just, you killing it, dude. I'm like, you, you you know, unless, unless you just put no, you know, I feel like you you doing the darn thing as far as just uh, really just following God and yeah. um, making sure that you are are, are, are being a God honoring husband, a good yeah. father, uh, a good uh, minister, a good leader in your community, and all that kind of stuff, man. So well, y'all to, check to out your that point, book. Yeah, to your point, James. The the moment I really understood that you know people say God first, put God first. Yeah. You know, and everybody says that, and there's all these distractions, there's every single thing that can pull you away from your relationship with God. But the moment I had my, you know, Damascus, uh, you know, Paul, Paul moment, um, yeah. you know, I, I really understood that God first in every single aspect of my life will help me. And that's, you know, personally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally, um, avocationally, vocationally, financially, all of it. Um, so I do appreciate it, uh, but it's it's all the Lord, you know. I'm just yeah. take it one day at a time, and and like you were talking about, you know, from the pain and you know all these other things, God said, "Hey, give me that pain, and I'll give you something else in exchange." Mm-hmm. And uh, it's up to us to trust Him and to give Him those things. Yeah. And so, man, I want to I want to ask you a couple more questions, man. As as you have developed, I, I feel like you turned out all right. You know, you're not in jail. Jesus. Um, 
you know, you're, you're alive and well. We're sitting here and talking today. Um, you did fit the statistic. You're African-American man uh, with no father in the house, uh, single mom and all this kind of stuff. And so you fit the category to, to not be where you are today. Um, and I understand that, you know, God guided it and directed it all. But even in God uh, orchestrating it all, there are some practical things that I feel like maybe he put in place in your life to help you get where you are today. Um, what were, what were some key things in your life, man, that helped you to, to make those decisions, uh, where you were, you're choosing God or even maybe even before you knew God choosing the right thing instead of the wrong thing. And, um, how was that process, uh, for you? Yeah, I think that, um, I, it brings back a memory of, you know, before I, became a, a Christian. I, I thought I, I thought I knew what the gospel was, but I was, it was still a little distorted. But I'll yeah. never forget, I went on a church trip, and it was with, uh, you know how it is in your hometown. You know, you can't go back to the hometown. Everybody, you know, oh, there you are, little boy. Uh, you know, like Jesus talks about in, in the Bible. And uh, I will never forget, and the hometown where my family lives is a small town called Kannapolis, North Carolina. It's extremely small. But we went on this youth trip, uh, at the church, and this was before I was a Christ follower, and then we went to like, um, you know, they were singing worship, and I remember all the whole group was sitting down, and uh, you know, and everybody in the auditorium is standing up, and so I stood up, just going, man, I think we should stand up, which seems like a small thing, right? You can stand yeah. or sit during worship; the Lord loves you, right, right. Matter, you know. Anyway, uh, right. but I recall I was being picked at you by don't get no extra blessings for standing yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, getting yeah, no, yeah, not not one step closer to heaven, uh, right. but. I, rem- I recall that the people in the youth group were picking at me because I was standing up for worship. It was the wow. weirdest thing. And, and I still remember that. And I think just having that thing of like, God, I want to do whatever you say to do. It may be embarrassing. Uh, I may have no idea what I'm doing. Lord, you know I'm going to stumble about 50,000 times along the way because I'm going to go want to do what I want to do. Just right, bring right. me back. So it's been a part of me, which is like, there has there is more to life than pain and suffering and frustration and debt and bad relationships and divorce like that's not all that god has for us you know we are in a a place that has pain and suffering you know this is the best possible world to get this is the best possible way to get to the Mm -hmm. best possible world you know so for the whole thing was for me to say god i cannot waste this time dwelling on the things that are bad because I can only do the things that I can change. I can change my mindset. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. That's about it. You know what I mean? I, I, I can change how I feel about it. I can change how I think about it. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think for those, it was really that and then God placing some strategic men around my in, in my life and knowing that God is a father to the fatherless. But at the same time, we have to choose to accept that help. We have to choose right. to open up and trust other men. We have to choose to open up and be vulnerable, and we have to choose to take that step um, or not. And for me, I was like, I, I, I'm going to choose this, and I haven't looked back. So for anybody that's you know, hesitant to trust someone or to look for help or to say, God, I want to live this life, um, I encourage you to do it because God's not going to force you. We're not robots, um, but you do right. need to choose. And the choice has risks, and the choice, as you said, is hard, but it's yeah. worth it. It's so worth it, man. Um, I remember, man, when I when I got for real about just living for God, and um, man, I got rid of some things in my life. Um, I told it on on this channel before, you know, as far as like pornography and different things like that, and different habits, and really just getting serious and serious and more serious about God, and just releasing things like pornography, releasing certain sins and activities and different things like that. Man, um, it, it made it, it made a difference in my life. Because I felt like I was truly making the choice to just honor God. And I bring up that specifically because, like, for me, um, you know, I was, the, I was the good kid. You know, on, on the outside, everything looked fine. I was one of the youth leaders and different things like that. So I had it all together, but I had a secret sin in my life. And when I made the choice to just really just be, like, for real, for real, and, and consciously make efforts daily to live for God, even when nobody was looking, it just, it made a difference in my life. And that goes for like the big things that people can see and the secret things, man. It just, it just makes a difference when you make that choice to be for real about God. And it's just like, he gives you 
an extra boost, like the Holy Spirit working in you and stuff like that, man, to continue to give you the strength that you need to honor him. Because it gets tough, man, Mm -hmm. especially as a young man, when you're seeing everybody else doing what they want to do, everybody else enjoying their life and seeming like they don't have any consequences. And you're sitting over here, you know, this lame Christian kid doing all the right stuff, not having fun. And um, but God sees you, man. And I, I want to encourage any young man out there, man, and you're you're constantly making those choices to honor God instead of choosing flesh or choosing what the world wants you to do. Um, man, keep choosing God because God sees you, right? He yeah. sees you. He sees what you're doing. Even if nobody else sees it, God's going to honor that. And, you know, however he, he sees fit, you know, it may be something public that he does. It may be something private that he does inside your heart. That's not your it's not for you to worry about. Your goal is to just honor God no matter what, in every single area of your life, and then watch him just take care of you, man. So that's just yeah. good stuff, well, man. Well, Satan does a great job of help of um, tricking us to make it feel like we're losing out on the life here. You know, yeah. for Christ followers, this is not our home. You know, we don't. Right. You know, the, <laughs> we don't need to start making a bed here. You know, for all the the you know the the things that we can enjoy in this life. Uh, but but again, at the same time, there are, there are a lot of things that I love that I get to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I right, love right. what I get to do. I love my life, um, and I love the life that God has given me. And so even for you know those listening, when we talk about you know make a choice, you know you got to choose. You know that doesn't mean you're making a choice to perfection. You know it just means as you stumble along the way, you know get up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> Help me to stay strong and to keep moving forward. That's that's what it's about. It's not going, oh, man, I messed up. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to go. What's the point? So I'm just going to yeah. revert back to old habits. Yeah. No, it's going, God, there's something for me. God, you know my heart. I'm sorry. God, please help me. You know, again, reach out to those people. Um, get a group of people around you because if, if the enemy can get you distracted, then he can pull you out of your purpose. You know, if he mm. can get you – I mean, think of all the – you know so many pastors so many leaders not just pastors but leaders you know who've just gotten tired um, fatigued um, you know what i mean and then as you get tired and wear down the choices that you make they start to slow down and the decisions right. and the wisdom and the next thing you know you don't really want to do you know what god calls you to do because you're really enjoying right. the things for you and then sadly um you know, you lose credibility, but think about all the people that you could be helping and encouraging. It's not just about yeah. you. It's about people around you. Yeah, man. There's a, um, I was listening to a pastor. I, I seem to bring him up in every podcast episode, but Tony Evans. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's my guy I'm listening to right now. Every, every, almost every morning, man, his podcast. And he was just talking about the reality of the spiritual war that we are in this, this other world war that we can't see that's affecting our lives and like man we we have to make sure that we are doing what we need to do especially as men especially as as god honoring men if we're leading and um we're leading in some sense whether you're leading at home or whether you're leading a whole entire church or whole nation yeah. you know we have to make sure that as, as biblical god honoring men that that we are not cutting corners that we are not allowing ourselves to, to, to take part of the things of this world. My pastor says, giving yourself permission, you know, to, to look or to do something, you know, it's just this one time and all this kind of stuff, but having that mindset of like, yo, man, I, I gotta be on it because the devil's on it. He, he, he's, he's, he's like a roaring lion waiting to tear me up. Mm-hmm. And so I gotta make sure that I'm doing what I need to do to honor God, man, because, um, like, like you said, man, like it's, one mistake, one mistake away from ruining everything. And it's, it's not to create this pressure for you guys, but to create this this uh, realistic viewpoint of like we, we can't be lax in our pursuit of God. Man, we have to keep pushing. We have to keep moving. Um, so, man, as we as we land the plane, dude, on um, on this episode, I want I want you to uh, think about this question. And I like to ask this question to all my guests, man. If if uh, if you can speak to every single man, uh, every single man in the world, and uh, no language barriers, no translation issues or anything like that, if you could speak to them and you knew they completely understood what you said, and that you knew 100% that they would take that one thing that you said and apply it to their lives, what would that thing be that you would tell um, tell every single man in the world? 
Yeah, uh, it's easy. I would ask I would ask them a question, and the question would be, "Where are you going? Mm. Where are you going? Where are you going?" That's the biggest question because if you don't know where you now, you don't need crystal clear. You know, at age forty six, I'm going to have you know six hundred thousand, four hundred. You know, I don't, we don't need to get all <laughs> that specific. Right, right. But if you don't know where you're going in this life, any road will do. Whew. Any any way will do. Any person wow. will do. Wow. Anything. Yeah. So if you don't have some type of end goal, um, Stephen Covey's book, um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of them yeah. is to begin with the end in mind. And right. so for me, I know that I want to live my life just like, you know, that aligns with you, James. I want to live my life to honor God, um, you know, and I'm in ministry. I want to do that in my personal life when nobody's looking. I want to do right. that in my public life. I want to do that in my marriage with my children. Um, so because I know that, then those choices that we talked about, those go down to everyday choices. You know, am I going right. to work nonstop when I can work and put the effort in and put my phone away, put the effort in. Now I'm actually done. So now I can spend time with my family. Okay. Yeah. Now I know, am I still tired or do I have enough energy? Did I plan for it to make sure I do the dishes and to help out? Okay. Now do I still have enough energy to take care of myself? physically because if i'm not healthy how can i serve anybody how can i be yeah. here you know to to serve and to help and to be here for my family if i'm not taking care of myself but all yeah. that comes with what's the end in mind so that would be the question i would ask where are you going and if you don't not and if you don't have the answer to that i suggest you slow down connect mm -hmm. with god ask god for a vision for your life take a walk get a pad write it down pray and and let god let god speak into that not you yeah. by what you saw online, but let God speak into that. <laughs> then from that vision, make those choices, daily choices to get you there. And that's what yeah. helps, um, you know, so we can be a man that follows God and that honors God in all aspects of our lives. But if we don't know yeah. where we're going, any road will do. That's good, man. That's so good. That's so good because, I mean, that, that just encompasses everything, man, because... If, if you have a goal, like you said, an end in mind, then everything lines up with that, right? Your career, your your relationships, uh, your, if you're a father, um, you know, even in your friendships and in your, even in your thinking, your personal feelings and stuff like that, man, is all that just kind of funnels through this filter of honoring God in every single part of their lives, man. And um, that's good. All right, man. So we're going to go and do the lightning round. I wonder if that messed up. Lightning round right here. So right. how this game works, we have a series of questions that I'm going to ask you. Yes. You have to answer them as quickly as possible. They're not related to anything that we talked about today, and they're probably not related to each other. So the first question, texting or talking? Te uh, talking. Talking all day? All day. I hate texting. Okay. It's awful. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Cake batter from Brewster's. Too easy. Cake batter from Brewster's? I don't think I ever heard of that before. That sounds pretty good. Huh? I like my dessert, you, uh, so that was an easy one. <laughs> yeah, it's it was like I already, I always, I have answers to every dessert in yeah. my mind. Ready? Girl, off, don't off tattoo it on my arm, actually. Yeah. Are you are you a cat or a dog person or none of the above? Uh, my wife has helped me become a dog person. Okay. All right. All right. Does she have to convince you with a, a cute little puppy or something like that? Or well, what? right now she is trying to convince me to get another dog. So uh, to be in a home with two kids and two dogs, and I am prayerfully <clears throat> considering that. <laughs> All right. So um, do you, would you rather go to the movie theater or would you rather binge your favorite shows at home? Uh, movie theater. I don't binge movie theaters. Shows. Yeah. All right. Cool. Movie theater. You gonna you gonna see Doctor Strange, man? You, you see that yet? You gonna go I see will. It? Yeah, they have a two, there's a Tuesday night special here to where the tickets uh -huh. are half price. So that's when I go. Come on. Yo, I'm gonna have to. Me and Marv <laughs> talk about it last night, man. We trying to get to it. I, I've I've got her hooked on Marvel. Yeah. And I got her watching all the shows with me, and I'm just telling her it's all connected. It's all connected. So she, she, we're we're pretty hyped, man. I I think I'm gonna get her to 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 go. We just gotta find the time. We gotta find the time. And somebody to watch right. the baby. Yeah. Yep, somebody <laughs> watched the baby. So, um, uh, do you like Disney World? Yeah, I do. You do? I do. All right. What is, What is your favorite park at Disney World? Ooh. I know you've been to them all. Ooh. 
Favorite park in Disney World? That's a tough one. I'd have to say, with my kids and Allison, uh, Hollywood Studios. They love it. Hollywood Studios? Yeah. Okay. They love it. Cool, yeah. We recently went to um, Magic Kingdom for the first time, my baby girl, for her kind of birthday gift. And, you know, it's more like a gift for us, too, until we had to pay for everything. Yeah, for her next uh, five years. So, yeah. Right. It's your gift for the next five years, baby. You, yeah. Soak it Let's up. Let's get the pictures. <laughs> Let's get the pictures. And Happy I, birthday. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I like it, man. Like I said, this is only one park. You know, we got plans for the future to, to hit all of them eventually at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I like it. I think I, I think I like it until I have to pay for something now. Tell me, um, tell me, man, are you a Xbox or a PlayStation guy? I have or both. PC. I, yeah. So I'm a ga- I'm an overall gamer. So I got the Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. No PC because those are no like, PC. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. But okay. I, I like cool. video games. And actually, yeah. Allison plays with me now. So during quarantine, she picked up video games, which is, um, yeah, literally. And, Dude, we, uh, and we that, probably need great. to do a whole podcast episode <laughs> because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of men listening to this that would appreciate a master class on how to get your wife Dude, to play video games. With I'm you. telling you, man, the first couple of years were a hard. So, you know, it's almost like a, you know, like a, um, an interview at a, a sports game. You know, first half <laughs> was a hard time. You know, yeah. but we got in that second half. We were to pull it through. So it's kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. Consistency. Uh, you know, to that. Yeah. Put the yeah, yeah. effort. Put thank it, the big put man upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Like, thank God. Like, thank everybody. All right, man. And um, if if you could be... Are you into anime any? I've tried to start watching it. I, I started with... Um, I've heard that Na- Naruto was good. I, I think Naruto. I said it right. Naru- yeah. Naruto. Naruto. Uh, so I, I just heard. started that, and then Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. So I'm trying okay. out anime. I've heard a lot about it, so I'm trying yeah. it out. Yeah, I say that I like anime, but really the only anime that I do like is Dragon Ball Z, and I got this Goku sitting right there. Yeah. So that's about that's about it, man. I tried uh, My Hero Academia. I tried that. I started like an era, uh, a episode of, of Naruto or Naruto, <laughs> however you say it. Yeah. I tried that, but uh, it's, it's so much, man, and I just like – when you're an adult and you have stuff to do, like you have a very limited amount of time mm-hmm. during your free time. And so I like mm-hmm. to do the things that I like to do. That's so All good. right, man. Um, so that's it for today. I'd like to thank you, James, for hanging out with us. My prayer is that you got some value out of my conversation with my friend James and that you'll be able to take just maybe one thing from this podcast and be able to apply it to your lives. Don't forget, if you're listening to this on the Apple podcast, make sure that you leave a five star review below so that we can get this podcast out to more men. And if you're listening to this on any other platform, make sure that you leave a like that you follow. Do what you have to do to make sure that you are getting this content every single time it comes out. And for all my YouTube viewers, make sure that you are subscribed, that you have have those notifications turned on and that you're smashing the like button so that this channel can continue to grow so that we can help men honor God in every single part of their life. If you would like more advice on what it takes to be a man of God, I want you to check out this video right here. All right, we'll see you over there. Peace.